let's look at a couple different topics related to electric fields. Starting with potential difference, or PD. This is defined as the work per charge to move a charge between locations. So imagine that you have point A and point B. You move a charge from A to B. And doing this requires you to do work on the charge. You have to transfer energy to the charge just to move it from A to B. Well, the way that we think about this is that the potential difference is the work that you have to do divided by the amount of charge that you've moved. Okay, so we can write down that equation. V is equal to W over Q, where V is the PD, or potential difference. W is the amount of work that you did to move the charge. And Q is the amount of charge that you moved. The unit of potential difference is the volt. Uh, and that is the same as the joule per coulomb, which you can see from the equation. PD is a scalar. There's no direction in it. And if you look at the equation for potential difference, you can see that it's in some ways analogous to the electric field. The electric field is the force per charge, and the potential difference is defined as the work per charge. We'll talk more about potential difference in 5.2. Now let's look at electromotive force which is usually abbreviated as EMF. This is the potential difference across a device which adds energy to, to a system. For instance, a battery. EMF is the potential difference across a battery or other device that adds energy to a system. So if you have a battery and the EMF across that is 1.5 volts, then the battery is doing 1.5 joules of work when it moves one coulomb of charge. And we can see that from the potential difference equation. Also, if there is a 1.5 volt EMF battery uh, and it moves two coulombs of charge, you can use that equation to figure out how much work the battery does in moving the charge. It does three joules of work in moving that charge. All right. Um, let's also look at power. So we've seen power before. Power is defined as the rate at which work is done. Well, electrical power is very similar. It's similar to regular old power that we've seen before, but it's the work done per time in some electrical capacity, like a circuit, which we'll talk about later. Uh, and we can mix these things together. So over here we have potential difference is equal to the work per charge. And for power, power is the rate at which work is done. So we've been writing that as work per time. And if we rearrange the potential difference equation, and then we make a substitution in the power equation, what we'll get is the power is equal to the potential difference times the amount of charge that's being moved divided by the time. And hey, the amount of charge that's being moved per time that is equal to the current. So the electrical power is equal to the current times the potential difference. And if we look at the units here, uh, well, we know the units for power. Power is in watts. Uh, we know the unit of current. That's in amps, amperes, amps. And then for potential difference, that's in volts. So it turns out, strangely, a watt is equal to an amp times a volt. And you could play around with those units and get other relationships as well. Let's uh, end up with the electron volt. So an electron volt is usually abbreviated as EV, little e, big V. And an electron volt is a unit defined as the energy or work that's needed to move an electron through one volt of potential difference. So it's an amount of energy. Uh, it's a unit, similar to how a joule is a unit. So let's try to figure out a uh, comparison between an electron volt and a joule. And the way we'll do this is, well, we know that we're moving through one volt of potential difference, and we know that we're going to move an electron. So let's go to the potential difference equation. We know the potential difference here, and we know the amount of charge that we're moving. So let's figure out how much work it requires to move an electron through one volt of potential difference. It's not much. It's very little. Um, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That is very small. So one electron volt is the same as 
1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That's a very, very small amount of energy. This, in everyday use, uh, it's not that common to see it uh, because it's so small. But we will see electron volts a lot when we talk about nuclear applications or atomic applications, things on very small scales. So it is useful in a lot of situations like that.